Hello, I'm Tim Bidermius, and this is NPR's Book of the Day. There's something about family lore that can feel, well, final. Whether real or imagined, there's a certitude that comes from a story that's fully contained. You know, this thing happened and here's how it shaped our family. But those stories can also be beginnings, points of entry into who our families are and could have been, and the world that shaped them. That's the case for Elizabeth Gonzalez James. A story she heard about her great-grandfather served as the inspiration for her new book, The Bullet Swallower. It's a twist on the outlaw Western novel, but it also pays homage to the beauty and complexity of the U.S.-Mexico border and the history and people that surround it. She talked about the book with All Things Considered host Ari Shapiro, and they chatted about the inspiration for the book, what it has to say about the U.S.-Mexico border today, and why it's so fun to write about people doing bad things. Here's Ari Shapiro. This message comes from NPR sponsor Universal Pictures with Argyle, a twist-filled and surprising take on the spy genre about an author whose fictional spy novels unexpectedly reveal the secrets of a real-life spy organization. Starring Henry Cavill, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Brian Cranston, Catherine O'Hara, Dua Lipa, Ariana DeBose, with John Cena and Samuel L. Jackson. Directed by Matthew Vaughn and written by Jason Fuchs. Argyle, only in theaters February 2nd, rated PG-13. Growing up, Elizabeth Gonzalez James heard a violent tale about her great-grandfather Antonio Gonzalez. It was that my great-grandfather was a bandito. He was put in jail in Houston. He broke out, got chased down by the Texas Rangers, and was shot in the face and left for dead. But he lived and eventually made it back to his family in Mexico. That earned him a nickname, El Tragabalas, the bullet swallower. He became a minor local legend, and he inspired Elizabeth Gonzalez James's new novel called the Bullet Swallower. She describes the book as a magical realism western about a Mexican bandito and his movie star grandson. The figure spanning these generations is a character she invented named Remedio. Remedio took a little while to nail down. Without giving too much away, he is a sort of soul collector. He is tasked by someone, God, perhaps, or a godlike figure, to take people who are dead to where their soul is supposed to go. And he's so interesting because he can move timelines, but he's also trying to understand who he is and what his job is, like in the context of the entire universe. And so there's a lot of space for me to kind of ask these really big questions like, why do people do bad things? Why does God let bad things happen? What is the punishment for evil? Hmm. Were you trying to portray something specific about the Texas-Mexico border and the relationship between the Mexicans and the white Texans in that time? I grew up on the Texas-Mexico border. I grew up in Laredo, Texas until I was 10, and then we moved to Corpus Christi, which is not on the border, but it's pretty close. I think explaining Texas to myself is probably going to be like the great project of my authorial life. Hmm. I'm constantly thinking about Texas. I'm constantly trying to understand it. And if I was trying to communicate anything about the border, it was hopefully that it is a very fluid place, a very complicated place, and a really incredibly beautiful place that I'm very proud to to have uh, grown up in. And I hope that I showed that in this novel. And I hope that I, if anything, maybe complicated the picture of what the border is and showed how it resists uh, these very simplistic narratives that people want to keep putting on it. The book fits very elegantly into a particular genre of outlaw Western stories. And so did you feel like you had to include certain set pieces like – you got to have a brothel scene, you got to have a scene on a train, you got to have you got to have the shootouts, a drought, you know, it's like it can't really be a western unless it checks certain boxes. That's really funny. I did not give any thought to um including or not including tropes 
in the novel. I think that once I decided to write the story and once I decided, okay, it probably in real life took place sometime in the 1890s, well, then the time period and the place sort of dictated that some of these set pieces were going to be present, right? And there was actually a terrible drought in South Texas at that time. So a little bit of it was imagination and a little bit of it was fitting within genre conventions and a little bit of it was was historical research. There's a line early in the book where you write, men were most inventive when they were devising ways to be wicked. And I wondered if that's part of the reason you as a writer gravitate to these kinds of outlaw stories. It's possible. Yeah. I mean... Like, it's just more fun to write about people doing bad things than good things. Oh, of course. And, I mean, that's like writing 101. You need to torture your characters. <laughs> you need to create dynamic characters who are constantly messing up. Those are the, the most interesting characters. And I really love movies about bad people, you know, good fellas, or there will be blood. These are, are terrible people. You would never want to spend any time with them. And yet they're so fascinating to watch on the screen because you're just waiting to see, like, what awful thing are they going to do next? Yeah. So what do you think your great-grandfather, Antonio Gonzalez, the real bullet swallower, would have made of this book? I'm not sure. I think about that a lot. I never met him. I never met his son either. He died before I was born. I never met my my father's father. I hope that he would enjoy it. I hope that he would be the sort of person who would have a good sense of humor and enjoy being the subject of a novel, you know, of <laughs> in a time and place that he probably couldn't even really conceive of. But I did feel like I had to make his ghost happy in so far as um, in so far as I could, never having met the man. Elizabeth Gonzalez James, her new novel is The Bullet Swallower. Thank you so much for talking with us about it. Thank you so much for having me. Know that fizzy feeling you get when you read something really good, watch the movie everyone's been talking about, or catch the show the internet can't get over? At the Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast, we chase that feeling five times a week. We talk about the buzziest movies, TV, music, books, and more. From lowbrow to highbrow to in between, catch the Pop Culture Happy Hour podcast from NPR. Support for this podcast and the following message come from South Carolina Federal Credit Union. Folks listening to this in a vehicle they're tired of owning are in luck. South Carolina Federal provides auto loans that could help reduce the costs of commutes and road trips. And there's no payment due for 90 days after closing. To learn more about how fast, friendly financing can get drivers behind the wheel and out on the road, visit scfederal.org. Loans subject to approval. Certain restrictions apply. This message comes from NPR sponsor Rosetta Stone, an expert in language learning for 30 years. Right now, NPR listeners can get Rosetta Stone's lifetime membership to 25 different languages for 50% off. Learn more at rosettastone.com NPR. 